And this is the afternoon edition of the Daily Weather Briefing video. This is for Monday, the 2nd of January. A lot of folks have the day off, but uh, weather never takes a day off. Well, you learn that as you do this long enough. And we've got an active weather day coming up tomorrow for the state. So let's get in there and talk about it. A lot of questions about the severe weather threat. First off today, this is the current upper air look. We have a very deep dynamic trough back in the western states that's providing snow for the Rockies and uh, a chance of severe storms for areas west of Alabama this evening. There's the visible satellite view, kind of a mixture of clouds and sunshine today. We've got a few spotty showers around, nothing especially widespread, and temperatures are very mild. And these were actually captured at 1 o'clock today. Birmingham at that point was at 72, and Mobile at 1 o'clock was at 80. How about that for the 2nd of January? Here's the watch warning map across the southeastern states. Uh, we have flash flood watches in effect now for parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, uh, over toward Memphis, the Mississippi Delta, back into extreme eastern Texas. And in the cold air sector of this storm, we have an ice storm warning in effect for parts of Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, winter storm warnings in effect from parts of Wyoming and Colorado into the Great Plains in Minnesota. So very uh, dynamic system ahead. This is the severe weather outlook through tonight. We have an enhanced risk of severe storms over Arkansas, down into parts of northwest Louisiana and northeastern Texas. In fact, uh, the first tornado watch of the season was issued earlier this afternoon back in that enhanced risk area. But, of course, for Alabama, the main concern, it's tomorrow and tomorrow evening. Uh, this is the broader risk running from the Gulf Coast up into parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. Here's a closer look at the updated outlook for tomorrow, and we have a level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk. The area is in orange, uh, south of a line from Tuscaloosa to Birmingham over to about Roanoke. Uh, some of the cities involved in that enhanced risk would be Montgomery, Greensboro, uh, Sylacauga, Greenville, Evergreen, Monroeville, Jackson, Grove Hill, Thomasville, Butler, York, Livingston. And uh, surrounding that, the rest of the state, all of the state, in a level 2 out of 5 risk for tomorrow. This is the probabilistic outlook for tornadoes. And I'll take me off the screen, and you can see that in that enhanced risk, there is a 10 to 14% chance of a tornado within 25 miles of a given point. And understand tornadoes are tiny, so that's a fairly significant number. And also note that hatched area that's in the enhanced risk, that means there could be a strong tornado. And by definition, that is EF2 or higher uh, in that. And we're going to talk much more about the timing and the magnitude of the threat and all the parameters here in just a second, so hang tight for that. And then this is day three, which is Wednesday. We have a marginal risk of storms, uh, severe storms off to the east of here. So this is the rain for the next seven days. Rain amounts generally one to two inches. That's not enough for flooding problems. And accordingly, we have no flash flood watches in effect here. But there could be a few heavy downpours involved. So let's go right to modeling. Model fans, this is the GFS, the 12Z run, valid tomorrow afternoon at 4. And uh, again, the upper low, the upper trough is lifting out. And really, the, the most energetic part of that is going to pass pretty far north of Alabama, which is a good thing. Here's the surface look. We have a surface low that's over western Iowa. And north and west of that surface low, we have a pretty good snow event going on for parts of Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, and northern Wisconsin. And, of course, down here in the warm sector, we'll deal with rain and thunderstorms. So let's look at high-resolution modeling, the convection-allowing high-resolution NAM, uh, three-kilometer grid resolution. This is valid tomorrow afternoon at uh, 6 o'clock, tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. And again, you can see we've got clusters of storms. So we, we don't have an organized line. And one question we have, could we have a lot of rain here in the morning that would keep the instability values down? That might happen. We don't see any strong evidence of that. And it looks like the storms that form in the afternoon will not be along a line. They'll be more in clusters and that the forcing is not especially strong. And, and where those storms do form, they no doubt could be strong to severe. Uh, instability values are not quite as high as we've seen in other runs, uh, but still certainly sufficient for severe storms, especially here in early January. Very sufficient for severe storms. This is the storm relative helicity. This is the veering of the wind with altitude in relation to storm motion. And uh, those values are certainly sufficient for rotating updrafts. And this is the composite index we call the significant tornado parameter. And you can see it's uh, peaking there on the western side of the state tomorrow evening. 
really in that broad zone from Tuscaloosa down toward Evergreen and Atmore. And uh, let's look at the updraft helicity tracks. And again, whenever we show this, I want you to understand that this is not the model saying tornadoes are going to touch down where you see those lines. But it's suggesting it's where conditions would be favorable for rotating updrafts and maybe a higher tornado potential. And we do note there is kind of a maximum of updraft helicity tracks over that enhanced risk for parts of central and southwest Alabama. Uh, so uh, it'll obviously be a day to be weather aware, and this is a look at the latest timing on the event. Uh, the timing for West Alabama, places like Tuscaloosa, the Shoals, Hamilton, Fayette, Mobile, 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. We've adjusted the timing a little bit here. Uh, and again, we could clearly and probably will have some rain before 11 a.m., but in terms of the severe threat, this is when there's the chance of severe storms. So for West Alabama, 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. Then for the central part of the state, this would include uh, Huntsville, Birmingham, Montgomery, uh, Gadsden, Greenville, Evergreen, Atmore, 1 until 9 p.m. And then for southeast Alabama, uh, the window is from 3 p.m. until 2 a.m., and it should be a setup where, again, if the storms are in clusters like this, we'll have the chance of all modes of severe weather, uh, the possibility of uh, strong straight-line winds, large hail, and maybe a tornado or two. And again, keep in mind where you see that hatched area, uh, really south of Birmingham and Tuscaloosa, down toward Montgomery and Demopolis and uh, Monroeville and Jackson, places like that, there could be a strong tornado involved. So everybody needs to be weather aware, and again, you can help us by letting your friends know that there's the chance of severe storms, just to be in a position to hear warnings and think about where you're going if we do have warnings and if you are in the polygon, because you do respect the polygon when they're issued. So that's tomorrow and tomorrow evening. We'll go to Wednesday, and uh, lingering rain should end fairly early in the day, uh, maybe by Five, six, seven, eight o'clock for the northern half of the state. The rain could linger down in southeast Alabama through maybe early Wednesday afternoon. And still pretty mild. There's no cool air involved here. Uh, Wednesday, we could see highs, again, close to 70. And then Thursday, we're dry and cooler. The high Thursday, closer to 60. Uh, the sky, partly to mostly sunny. This is Friday. We'll start the day around freezing. Friday morning will feature lows in the low 30s in most spots. The high Friday will be in the middle 50s. Saturday as the weekend begins at this point looks dry. Again, we start the day in the 30s. The high will be in the 50s, which is seasonal. That's where we should be. That's average type weather for this time of the year. And then again, the GFS is suggesting a little feature might bring a few showers in here on Sunday. Uh, probably nothing too heavy. And this is a week from today, Monday, the 9th of January, and a zonal flow, and that little feature is moving out, maybe a few lingering morning showers. Let's go out 10 days. This is Thursday of next week, January 12th. Little shortwave ridge in place here, and we're dry with the chance of showers well off to the west. So in terms of any high-impact events, once we get past this severe weather threat, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, things look relatively quiet for the rest of this week and much of next week as well. This is the expected rain for Birmingham coming off the GFS Ensemble. The mean about three inches between now and the 18th of January. And again, uh, very mild today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. But after Wednesday, temperatures look very seasoned. Like I talked about this morning, there is no such thing as normal weather. It doesn't exist. There is average weather, and those values are average here. Uh, that's what we expect in January. Highs in the 50s, lows in the 30s. It looks like we'll pretty much be in that average range through uh, mid-month. Although we note on the brand new uh, CPC outlook, this is for the 10th through the 16th, suggesting temperatures might be a little above average. And again, for the cold weather fans, understand we've got a lot of cold weather left here, a lot of cold shots. Uh, winter is just now beginning. So once again, if you're just joining us very quickly, those that are watching live, this is the latest severe weather outlook for tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. And we had that level three out of five risk for parts of central and southwest Alabama. Uh, that would include places like Clanton, Rockford, Sylacauga, Alexander City, Montgomery, Evergreen, Greenville, Demopolis, Linden, Grove Hill, Thomasville, Centerville, Brent, Butler, Baymanette, northern part of Mobile. 
And in terms of the timing, we'll start to uh, watch the storms for potential for severe activity about 11 o'clock tomorrow morning on the western side of the state. The window there, 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. Uh, for the central part, 1 until 9 p.m. And then for southeast Alabama, 3 p.m. until 2 a.m. And uh, just keep in mind that any storm that forms could produce hail, strong straight-line winds, and maybe an isolated tornado or two, the higher tornado threat in that enhanced risk, level 3 out of 5, where you see the hatched area on that particular graphic there. So that's going to do it for the uh, afternoon weather briefing today. Uh, a couple of notes uh, for those that are maybe new here and don't know how it works. Whenever, If we do get into tornado coverage tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening, all of my attention, every little CPU cycle in my head is focused on the live coverage on the television side. And you can watch that over the air. Don't forget, over the air TV is free. A cheap antenna, it doesn't cost anything. You don't need the internet or satellite or cable or anything. Uh, another great way to watch it is on YouTube. Just go to ABC 3340's YouTube channel and subscribe or their Facebook page. Uh, and if you have a Roku or an Apple TV or, you know, Fire Chromecast, any of those things, just watch us on YouTube. Uh, go to ABC 3340's YouTube channel and subscribe and get the notification button and all that. And that's the best way to watch us there. And again, all of the attention is focused over there. And hopefully we won't have to do any tornado coverage this time. And one more point, uh, you know, th this is not that unusual uh, for this time of the year. This is tornado season. I, I say this all the time and I'll say it again. Tornado season here is November through May, November through May. And this is January, and that is in the tornado season. So it's not that odd having this type of weather uh, this time of the year. So uh, that's it. Got to wrap it up. We'll be across the hall here on Studio A in Studio A this evening for ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. And don't forget, no 